Who will guard the Sahel with the death of Idris Deby? The marshal who ruled Chad for three decades died on Monday from wounds sustained on the battlefield, his military said. He was a key figure in fighting Islamist extremist groups across the Sahel region. Faithful to his oath to the nation and the Chadian people, the Marshal of Chad, President of the Republic, Head of State, Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, Idris Deby Etno, has just breathed his last, defending the sovereign nation on the battlefield. The 68-year-old's death was announced on Tuesday, just a day after he was declared the winner of an April 11th election. He ruled for 30 years after seizing power in a coup. Former colonial power France was a strong support. Its Barkhane anti-jihadist force, made up of 5,100 French troops, is headquartered in the Chadian capital of Unjamena. French President Emmanuel Macron and the European Union's foreign policy chief Josep Borrell attended Deby's funeral on Friday, a testimony to the importance of the alliance. France will never allow anyone to jeopardize and will never allow anyone to threaten the stability and the integrity of Chad, neither today nor tomorrow. Chad has respected armed forces, which is central in the battle against a myriad of extremist groups operating in North Africa. The military announced Debbie's death a day after claiming a great victory against rebel group the Front for Change and Concord in Chad. The odds of the victory raise questions. 500 insurgents killed, but only five Chadian soldiers. Details are also sketchy on exactly how Debbie was wounded. Meanwhile, allies of the late leader moved swiftly to ensure that power remained in their hands, installing his 37-year-old son Mahamat as president and head of a transitional military council. We wanted to reassure the public that the members of the transitional military council will hand over power to a civilian government after free and democratic elections within 18 months. But people on the street and the opposition denounced a coup. It shouldn't be like that. The president of the assembly is there, so he should take over. But we give power to the military again. It's the same logic as it is to be, so of course I'm against it. I can only agree with those who currently condemn the setting up of a military body. It looks like a coup. There should not be a coup. Therefore, we should simply bring into play the institutional mechanisms that exist, namely the constitution of Chad. The United States also expressed reservations. We support a peaceful and democratic transition of power to a civilian-led government. Obviously, uh, developments in, in recent days and hours uh, are a cause for concern. Um, but we will continue uh, to call for and support a peaceful democratic transition to a civilian-led government. The transitional leadership has vowed to continue the fight against terrorism. This is vital. At the same time, it inherits Devi's legacy of bulldozing democratic freedoms. He won re-election against lightweight opponents. Serious candidates were blocked from running. Protests were banned or dispersed during the campaign. A massive loss for African history. A runaway fire on the foothills of South Africa's Table Mountain engulfed the library at the University of Cape Town this week. The Jagger Reading Room housed more than 85,000 books and 3,000 films from across the continent. As firefighters battled to contain the flames, some residents and university students were evacuated. A railway accident in Egypt killed 23 people and injured 139 last Sunday. Several rail carriages came off the tracks in a farming town in the fertile Nile Delta outside the capital Cairo. Prosecutors ordered the arrest of 23 people and the railway chief has been sacked. 
Last month, at least 20 people died and nearly 200 were injured in a crash in the south. In Cape Verde, the ruling Movement for Democracy Party won parliamentary elections last Sunday, handing Prime Minister Ulysses Correa y Silva another term in office. The party won 37 out of 72 seats in the National Assembly. The tiny archipelago of 550,000 people lies off the coast of Senegal and is hailed as a bastion of democracy in Africa. Feet firm in the sand, they tackle each other again. Wrestling is back in Senegal for the first time in more than a year. The coronavirus shut down fights in March 2020. No more training, no more crowds, no more matches. This caused a great deal of loss for everyone involved. Because wrestling isn't just about wrestlers, it's also the teams and the entire economic environment that exists around the sport. Wrestling is incredibly popular in Senegal, second maybe only to football. More than a game, it has cultural importance. It's rooted in harvest rituals of the local Sera and Jola people. It's also a source of employment. More than 8,000 people lost their jobs when COVID-19 struck. Not even the stars were spared. The wrestler, known as Umur Sene, couldn't wait to hear the crowds roar around the arena again. If we only had to take care of our families in this time, it wouldn't be a problem. But others rely on us, with whom we have to share what we have. I'm very close to my fans, and I have a responsibility to support them. We've really felt the impact of the damage caused by the pandemic. The 42-year-old ex-king of the arena dreams of retaking the title he lost in 2019. This means intensive exercise, but also some traditional security. The fighters wear charms around their wrists, ankles and arms. Almost no one can approach them before a match. It could spell bad luck. All Senegalese people enjoy wrestling because we find ourselves in it. It's more than a sport. It's an entire cultural experience that is wrapped up in watching a wrestling match. Mass protests shook the country in March, the worst unrest in years. Wrestling bosses say the return of fighting will restore Senegal's spirit.